In numerology, every number has a special significance and an energetic influence that is tightly embedded within the matrix we call 3D reality. As we prepare to leave 2015, an eight year, and move swiftly into what celebrated numerologist Sharon Milstein calls a number of power, the nine year, there's much she cautions us to be aware of. What will this nine year of 2016 signify in terms of which direction this planet will be heading? Let's check in with Sharon for this, our annual New Year forecast by the numbers 2016. Well, it's that time of year again. Time to hear from my friend, numerologist, spiritual advisor, and intuitive healer, Sharon Milstein. This is Sharon's third time back on the show to share what has now become her annual New Year forecast. And Sharon, I am absolutely looking forward to what you have to say as we head into this, uh, what is known as the nine year, particularly with all that has led up to this point on our planet. But before we do, I want to spend a little time reviewing the eight year, this year that we're still in, uh, as we wind down, catch our breath, just long enough to gear up for what I know is going to be action packed to say the least. So welcome. Sharon. Well, thank you so much, Alexis. It is a pleasure for me to have this visit and time with you in the audience. Excellent. Excellent. It's always a pleasure to to chat with you. In fact, you and I were chatting for probably an hour or so last night about uh, some of the the previews of what we're going to be talking to. And I know that there's a lot. Um, We've been in contact actually throughout the year to discuss many things that are unfolding, it seems, at warped speed. And we're going to touch on a few of uh, these global events that have rocked our world, figuratively speaking, but also literally rocked our world. And I'm talking about the unprecedented earthquakes that seem to be happening with greater frequency and in areas not normally reported. I bring this up because you made it a very strong point last year, Sharon, in your forecast that this eight year, 2015, would be a time where, quoting you, the earth will be moving under our feet, unearthed. And this has certainly happened. I want our audience to take a listen to a brief statement you made in that regard, and then we're going to discuss this a little bit on the back end. So let's take a listen. Uh, this this number eight, remember I, I mentioned seven was water? Mm-hmm. Eight is earth. Mm. So in terms of weather, it, it has to do with... Um, the earth it will be moving under our feet, unearthed. The earth will be moving under our feet. So are you yeah. insinuating more earthquakes? Yes, yes, earthquakes uh, uh, and um, uh, there, there are other, you know, when, when the earth moves, it causes a lot of other elements, you know, mm-hmm. but like avalanches and... and um, people drowning and such like that so we have that little bit of that of that water but yes it has to do with volcanoes it has to do with earthquakes which will cause you know typhoons and other things you see wow well needless to say sharon you nailed it once again you know here's one headline that i found that uh, speaks to the frequency of earthquakes in one area in our united states and that's oklahoma and the headline read oklahoma reports surge in earthquakes during 2015 and then in the story uh, as part of the article it says as 2015 nears its end 850 earthquakes of magnitude three or greater have stirred the state of oklahoma compared to 584 of the same magnitude in 2014, and only 109 in 2013. So they say the trend is clear. Earthquakes are on the rise. Your comments? Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, I couldn't keep track of the earthquakes, you know, the movement under our feet, as mm-hmm. I mentioned, the earth moving, and um, I couldn't keep track. I mean, there was significant amounts, and we spoke about it every time there was another earthquake. You know, I'm just as moved by my own statements and my own information as, you know, anybody else might be hearing it. Um, But, you know, it seemed like the year started off, this 2015 that we're still in right now, uh, today, I believe, is the 18th of December, 2015, Mm -hmm. just for it to be on record. But, you know, in the the first week of January, 
there was uh, 11 earthquakes in Dallas, Texas within 24 hours. I know, I know, really. And, and yeah, so that that was quite a stir. It's not just the earthquakes, but there's been mudslides, sinkholes, landslides, cracks, fissures. And uh, I, I just, you know, the U.S. Uh, Geological Survey says that, you know, a two two magnitudes of 4.0 plus earthquake struck the San Andreas Fault, and we know about that, and that's, you know, the border of California and Mexico. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they say that that, uh, earthquakes that are just below the surface can cause more damage even though there are lower magnitudes, you know. Mm -hmm. There's been earthquakes on January 8th in, in Nigeria killed 100 people. Uh, Peru, the highlands, uh, there were there was uh, auto-sized rocks that were crashing into the ground. It killed seven, destroyed sixty-five homes. Mm-hmm. There was on uh, March in March of two thousand and fifteen. Just to give you a few, massive sinkholes in the Dead Sea. Uh, more than three thousand sinkholes, and and they're multiplying according to the environmentalists. Of course, we heard about the earthquake in Nepal, 8,900 dead. That's right, close to 9,000, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it probably went up a little. And then, of course, that that was uh, triggered an, an avalanche in Mount Everest, and there was 100 aftershocks. Then I saw something interesting, that there was um, a monster fissure, which was growing and threatening Lake Whitney in Texas. It was like a mon- a massive crack in the earth. And on April 23rd, CBS said that there's a surge in earthquakes in Oklahoma, as you mentioned. Right. Um, it's record-breaking earthquakes outside of San Francisco, and it's four times the last record. The last record was set in 2003, and... This is four times more outside of San Francisco in half the amount of time. Um, And then what I understand also is that there's just a new trend in dormant volcanoes that are waking up now. Mm -hmm. And they measure the volcanoes by the V, V like victory, E like Edward, I like ice cream. So V-E-I, which is the volcano... Um, uh, sort of uh, ex- the, the volcano index, explosive index, that's what it is. And they say that most volcanoes are small, but if they ever reach a VEI of seven or eight, and if that ever erupts, the energy that's going to be released will be like millions of nuclear bombs going off all at once, at once. like wow. overnight. That's really and something. that that will transform our civilization. Yeah. So it has been. Uh, I see that in Minnesota in November, that no Mississippi, excuse me, uh, Mer- Meridian, Mississippi in November, that the parking lot. I don't know if you remember hearing that. That twelve cars were were swallowed up in the parking lot in a sinkhole. I did hear that. That actually, yeah. I think, made national news. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then the New York Daily News said that there was a massive uh, crack in Wyoming, 50 yards wide, and like seven foot be- football fields long. I mean, you know, things are like, I said, under our feet. You said. Then and you, these vo- you, volcanoes you, in Hawaii, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, you said unearthed, and that's literally, w- yes. literally what we what yes. we saw. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have a couple questions on this. Yeah. Again, we could yeah. clearly do a whole show on this. And as I'm listening to all of these record-breaking headlines, um, yeah. you know, I still, we're going to get into some of the other tumult that is perhaps oh, yeah. more man-made. But uh, I think because those, the events that we're going to be talking about, the, the unrest has dominated so much that, the you know, you've really done your research here. But I, as I'm listening to you, I'm wondering how many people realize and have put that together and are really paying attention to the impact uh, that uh, the earth moving has had this year. So let's park that for a minute. But uh, okay. go 
go go ahead. I, well, you know, here's another question I had regarding the the earthquakes, and I think you may have mentioned this briefly last year, Sharon. And that is the you know we wonder what the impetus is at at the core, if you will, for these earth moving events. And many in our audience know that the uh, fracking, hydraulic fracking, yes, is yes. Uh, a bone of contention to say the least. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I would say, regardless of what the impetus was and is, uh, I'm sure fracking is not helping. I'm sure it's exacerbating the situation. It's still um, emerging on the on the physical level as the earth moving, as you said. Yes, and there's you know, according to to you know what I've read that, um, you know, it, it's not, <laughs> this movement of the earth is not just changing the landscape of the world, but but the landscape of the world is changing overall on every front. Uh, so it's physical, and some of it is from the fracking they're claiming for, from uh, Oklahoma, but some of it's, a lot of it's due to volcano activity, it's due to plates that release gases and that there's movement in plates. Some are just mysterious. You know, that I don't even know if you remember years ago, a man was in bed and he went right into the ground, you know, from his house, and that was in Florida, and that was years ago. But there's more now than there has been. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, when there are landslides, it's usually because it's, sort of on a hill and there's uh, underground water that sort of creates weaknesses, you know. Uh, and there's been an exceptional exceptional amount of, of water, rain, snows, whatever, that really started in 2014, which I also predicted that was the year of water and this uh, 2015, the year of Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, here's something very interesting, talking about uh, the landscape changing because of all kinds of things, but on the subject of movement, um, in you know, according to the Express, um, which I guess is a newspaper, the last now listen to this: the last world eruption witnessed by Indonesia in 1815 resulted in a year without summer and created a famine. Many animals and crops were gone. So today, due to the you know dense population, what what killed thousands then, two centuries ago, would now be cataclysmic, mm-hmm. and and so there are a lot more people, and there's a lot more poverty because of resources, and a lot of these shanty places, uh, houses that are built in, with you know in in many areas of the world, when there are these kind of eruptions uh, of the earth, this this is devastating. This puts countries completely behind. Mm -hmm. Why is it happening? Some of it is very mysterious, and only God knows. And let me go back to the beginning of the world. You know, according to uh, a spiritual advisor, uh, Brucha Mashaninov, what she says about number nine, she's a spiritual teacher, is that it's the foundation. Number nine is the foundation. It's the creation of Adam. And right from the very beginning, there was conflict and, and dissonance between good and evil. There was confusion between good and evil from the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. And so this has continued to uh, accumulate the the uh, unclear, unboundaries uh, kind of life that we're all living. And as we can see right now, there aren't very many boundaries mm-hmm. because everything is just up in the air. And, you know, when they say the ceiling, you know, has fallen down and we have to pick up the pieces... That's what's happening right now right. in the world. Yeah. Well, and, I, want, I, and, I do yeah. want to get into that a bit more, mm-hmm. uh, Sharon. I mean, you know, we, it, and as a matter of fact, you said the, the darkest hour is before the dawn. I'm going to tell you, we've had some dark moments throughout the year, I think both uh, personally, individually, and globally, of course. And I want to talk oh, yeah. about that 
Yes. I want to talk about this. The, the, I'm putting them in quotes, so-called terrorist attacks, because we don't really know what it is, uh, both here in the U.S. and abroad. And uh, sadly, many too many to mention right now, although we can yes. uh, certainly touch on a few. But we see this yes. theme of darkness manifesting all over the world. And personally, I'm talking to others, I'm sure you are too, who are going through extraordinarily dark moments in their lives, uh, from relationship challenges to financial health challenges, all sorts of things. But the dawn, so to speak, I pray, is right around the corner, and I want to get to that. But first, Sharon, I want to get some of your thoughts on what we are witnessing now and what this represents. Is this this karma that you talked about last year? Yes, it is. Uh, we're in a number eight year, and, and that is the, uh, that's the connotation of the eight. It's karma. Mm-hmm. It's also attainment, achievement, accumulation, it's movement, it's power, it's authority. We see the power trying to rule. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, uh, on Tuesday of this week, I did an interview with the Taos News. Mm-hmm. This was on Tuesday. And I said to the woman, Virginia Clark, who was interviewing me, I said to her, you know, this power, because I also had to t- talk about what I had predicted last year in the paper. I said the power and the karma. I said, you know, Donald Trump, the news is always about Donald Trump. And I said, Donald Trump is is like uh, the Putin of Russia, you know, or, or the Putin of Russia is like the Donald Trump of America. <laughs> um, and it just happened that last night on the news, and I couldn't believe this, Uh, they talked about Putin um, complimenting Donald Trump, and then they talked about Donald Trump responding and thinking Putin was wonderful, too. And so (laughs) the the power, uh, as it be it, uh, the the, the egocentrics and the powerful, the authoritative people are are trying to push forward. Uh, But... um, it's it's a very karmic year, and and we're all in it. You know, we're, we're all in the soup. Um, you know, look, there was in biblical times there was Noah and the ark. You know, trying to save the best of the people and the animals. Then there was you know Sodom and Gomorrah, where people were perverse and really were very evil. And there is evilness. But, but you know, there is a lot of evilness. In fact, you know, 31% of the world's mass shootings occur in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, so this, this is something that we're all dealing with. But according to Rabbi Mordechai Tenler, what he says is that this number nine has to do with gestation. It's the rebirth of the human race. And that each one of us entirely is a complete world. We are a complete world. And we are responsible for the world and each other. So this number nine that we're going into, which I will we'll talk about in a little while, is almost like the second Big Bang. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that when yeah. we're ready. For yeah, that. We're, we're just about there because I'm, I'm watching this time flying by and there's so much to cover. And again, I, I, I'm finding like, I think the last, uh, we've done this, what, this is our third time now. Last year we spent yes. a, you know, a fair amount of time talking about the previous year and assessing and, and sort of comparing notes. Um, but I do want to, because I know this is, I think I even used the word doozy for this year. Next year is going to be even more of a doozy. So I do want to uh, spend some time on that. But, you know, I, something occurred to me as I was preparing for our show today, Sharon, and that's you made mention of the fact, uh, the importance of October of any given year and how that yes. time tends to set a template or give a preview of what's to come in the following year. I want you to talk about that a little bit and what you see uh, if you can go back to this past October as representing for the new year, and then we can sort of segue into what we're uh, what we're about to get into. Well, uh, since October, and I I I, um, I know that there was a lot of Earth movement in October, particularly, but October brings in every October, the last three months of the year brings in the new energy for the new year that we start feeling. So we see an ending, but we also see it's 
through the endings that there are new beginnings. It's just a hairline away, you know, the endings and the new beginnings. But we saw a lot of of activity, Earth activity in October, and we we saw this, and you know, the, the, they talk about um, the paper, the Big Island News, talking about uh, the the uh, earthquakes and also the volcanoes that erupted that haven't erupted for for decades, really. Um, so we see this movement, which is movement in every form. It's not just the elements the weather, nature, uh, we have been moved. We have been moved to to uh, experience uh, a lot of people are fearful right now because of the massive shootings that are going on and the anger and also the micro uh, anger that's going on with people just, you know, individually, locally. We are all being affected, and I, I used to say before it even happen in this country we've been affected but you know now when there's jihad like in san bernardino california that's pretty close to home and so um the point that i want to make is this the news the sensationalism in the news i would say that you know 99 percent or more of the news is based on sensationalism and mm -hmm. what gets people's attention is the fear uh is the greed that's going on right now but you know i am so tired of that because you know children learn through imitation and i think it was the 70s when i was in college that i wrote a whole paper i was a psych major and i wrote a whole paper on uh the video games Mm -hmm. I believe it was the 70s, the late 70s, when they all started coming out. It could be the early 80s as well. And all these video games that came out, and young boys were studying precision, precision of murder, precision of killing. Uh, we, we are now seeing... Uh, uh, that accumulate the video games that never stopped you know they wanted to try to stop some of the aggressive video games but they got more and more bloody and now we see the result we have been seeing the result of of young angry uh, men mostly mm -hmm. uh and of course there are crops of women coming up that are also uh working on on the mass shootings and uh, evil intentions but you know, we have to understand that what we put out and what children and young adults witness and are um, imitating, that this is the result. This is re the result. You know, when the world gets to a place where women are showing their private parts in public, Mm -hmm. when when words connotations of 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 you know matrimony are changed the connotation which i have nothing against anybody marrying it's just that every single thing every part of our world has changed then it's almost as if there is no shepherd and when there's no shepherd leading the flock the flock gets lost and the flock gets in danger. That's an interesting. <sighs> that's an interesting uh, assessment, Sharon, that you make. And um, I have some thoughts on that, and particularly in the way you used uh, the shepherd, the leader. And you know, I may politely challenge you a little bit in terms of because I, let me let me tell you what it was going through my mind and what you uh, what you might respond to if I were to say the word trickster to you and the connotation of that what would that tell you and uh and i'm not going to get it's it's not meant to be a leading question but um I, I think i'm bringing this up for a reason rather than just putting you on the spot as you talk about the the shepherd and leading the flock i happen to think that the problem is that there is a shepherd leading the flock the herd leading them astray that would be your media your power structure, whatever that is comprised yeah. of. 
uh, clearly, unfortunately, I think the problem is that uh, uh, <laughs> the masses, too many still, are taking, uh, assuming a role of being a part of a herd, and they are willfully being led <laughs> down the wrong path. Oh, I believe there's there's a shepherd, all right. Unfortunately, not the right one. I think this is really a time of true sovereignty. Now, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, breaking the cardinal rule of objective journalism, but I had to make that statement. <laughs> um, and I and I totally understand what you're saying, yeah. and I agree. And it has to even do with the interview you had with John Rappaport, mm-hmm. which had to do with you know the feeble you know old man behind the curtain running the show, you know, right. not knowing mm-hmm. what he's doing. But I guess I'm not really. I, that's not what I'm intending. Okay. Uh, okay. You know. I, I, I totally get that. In fact, in my mind's eye, there's only like, you know, a few people really running the whole show. And, or trying and the, to. <laughs> or, or trying, trying to. to and, the, you know, the presidents, whoever's picked, which is a farce anyway, they're voting. But, you know, it's, they're, they're just the puppets. And so it all, the bottom line has to do with power and greed. That's really the bottom line. But, you know, I believe that when there, when sacredness, holiness, integrity, honorability mm. is lost mm. by by uh, a restructure and no boundaries, then this we're we're at a loss in a sense because it's like you know uh, what is that song? I can't get no satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. Mm-hmm. It's like there is no satisfaction. There's no contentment. You know, biblically, in our holy books, what does it say to be happy with your lot? We make our lot. That's right. And God helps us make our lot. But what about, think about this, what about if the news reported some of the good news? And I wonder if I could just mention a couple of good news things. Please do. You know, it's the good news that has a ripple effect and affects eventually all of us, because we are all one. So I, I was trying to understand where's the good news, except for just that percentage at the end of the national news on TV that they give you like a couple of That's seconds. That's right. <laughs> and so I started looking into this, and I saw that, um, well, first of all, uh, Zuckerberg and his wife, who just had a baby, mm-hmm. on December 2nd, it was... Uh, put out to the news that they are going to donate 99% of their Facebook shares, which is equivalent to about $45 million, to charity. That's right. I, that and did come like, out. Yeah, that was actually announced in, in conjunction with the birth of their baby. And that is, yes. you're right. Well, let me let me just interject this. There, there is plenty of good news. And you, you ask a, a very big question, but I think uh, putting again uh, in, in, in the spirit of truthfulness and a true analysis uh, uh, of the news, what it represents, and what it's designed to do, uh, Sharon. Unfortunately, in my coming from mainstream news, unfortunately, I got I got to see some of the good, a lot of the bad, and a lot of the ugly. And part of that bad and ugly is simply manipulation. Uh, good news doesn't move people. Good news does not frighten people. Good news does not keep people in control. Hence the reason why we do not uh, hear much of it. And I don't know, unfortunately, I'm going to sound a little bit uh, pessimistic here. I don't know that uh, unless we change the face of what we call mainstream media, that we will ever see a news broadcast uh, dominated or even balanced with good news. So, Well, you know, it may never dominate, but maybe there could be more of it. Sure could. You know, yeah. when, when I was looking into this and I was struck by the ripple effect about a 26-year-old woman in New York mm-hmm. who was a nonprofit worker, walk, was walking, you know, to get onto a train and saw a woman, a homeless woman who was very... Uh, uh, clearly emotionally disturbed and had no shoes. And this was in November 20th in New York City. And at that time it was cold, even though people right now in Central Park the other day were with shorts and having picnics <laughs> because the whole weather system and everything is sort of up in the air, as I mentioned. But this 26-year-old worker gave her shoes off her feet in late November when it was cold, to this barefoot woman, homeless woman, 
When she got on the train, and of course she was embarrassed because she had two different socks on, which she did occasionally, <laughs> and didn't realize that day when she took her shoes off that her socks didn't match, she got onto the train and sat down next to a man, and he looked at her feet and saw two different socks and no shoes. And he said to her, you know, I have my gym bag here, and I just happen to have an extra pair of socks. Can I offer them to you? Oh, I love it. Love it. <laughs> and and I, there are a number of incredible stories. Now, sure. when I say that, tell this story, I get the chills in my body. It's visceral. Yeah. yeah. Think about that. There's a lot of stories like this. There are. And I think that it would affect us. And it did affect that that woman was deeply affected by who she saw. And this man was deeply affected by the woman in her two different color socks. I think that this is powerful because now this is the other side of the coin, which by, by no means with, with the little commentary that I, I have that I'm giving up, because we know that we are essentially made of good. I think it's just going to be up to us to broadcast that good in, in whatever way we can. And exactly. there is there is a ripple effect. And there's something that's called the butterfly effect. Um, I don't know that this would fall squarely within how that's described, a butterfly effect. Uh, many of you probably know that uh, you, you do an act of kindness um, without any contingency. And yeah. perhaps halfway around the world, someone will feel the energy of that and thus uh, do another kind act. Uh, we also call it the hundred monkey effect in <laughs> in some corners of the world. So yeah, th this you're absolutely right, uh, Sharon. I, I'd love to get that story. And even if we could link it to the interview, I'd love to, to see that in its entirety. Well, that's great. Listen, yeah. I, you know, I, I could each each time we talk, every little piece that we put into our conversation, we could do an hour on each of them. Maybe oh, we should yeah. have a, a good news conversation one of these days. Soon. I would I th like to. I think I that would be great. Right okay. here. Yes. Well, we're going to have to save that for another show. Right now, yes, we're, I think it's important. It's it's of utmost importance uh, now more than ever. We're gonna we're gonna not kill them with kindness, but beat it with kindness, and 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 be uh and grow into who we really are through kindness and through good news so but let's get into 2016 sharon it's time to get into it you know i think there were um definitely a few uh major what we would call templates uh, i want to talk about the events uh i want to get right into that the events that kind of uh marked uh, major shifts at the end of 2015 and how that might affect 2016 so I want to start with that. We're talking about the Pope's landmark visit to the U.S. back in September. Oh, yes. The recent climate conference in Paris that just wrapped yes. up. To, the, to, to me, these were uh, and are major markers in where we're going as a planet. So I'm really anxious to hear if we could start out, uh, if, if we could, by how the events like that may play uh, prominently as we go into 2016. Yeah, well, that's, that is really important. This you know, Climate and Clean Air Act, you know, where many countries, I think 200 countries have gotten together. And, you know, the funny thing, without going into the whole number nine year that we're headed into, but there is a connection, um, and it has to do with, you know, there was a big summit on the climate and, and trying to get clean air and greenhouse gases and low pr uh, footprints, a low, you know, carbon uh, emissions, footprint, yeah. carbon, yeah, mm -hmm. carbon footprints. And this, this really was the major thing that happened in 2007, uh, where the countries really couldn't get it together, but there was a big, you know, uh, a big uh, meeting about that. And when we start talking about the number nine, you'll understand that the nine never goes away. So what was started then in 2007, the summit that they all tried to get together in, in producing this Clean Air Act, uh, is now, you know, maybe more of a reality. Uh, I think that that's very significant. Um, yeah, look, whether everything or other things are falling apart and everything is being, you know, redefined as far as boundaries and words and connotations and such, I'm glad we're working on something like this. However, the unexplainable movement of the earth is is mostly still due to, you know, fracking and 
and people who got away from the earth and the earth has gotten away from us they you know people are into the screens the electronic screens they they got away from earth is there's a tremendous imbalance so anything that we see now that is trying to help with balance well i say that that's good and i think that in 2017 we're going to probably see a little more of a development because that's when we start our whole new nine-year cycle and that will be a whole new rebirth Mm -hmm. and a a whole new uh you know um a whole new life and and lifestyle for for many people Mm -hmm. but we're not there yet and this is a process and uh, yeah i want to ask you though um Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna spend the balance of our time talking about the nine year. What, what I really want to get into is it is I'm thinking you, you mentioned the first climate conference uh, or the the most recent one prior to this one was in 2007. Yeah. Well, what was, what year was that in terms of the number? That was a nine. It was and a that, nine year. Isn't yes, that interesting? So when, yes, and that's what when we get into uh, discussing the huh. the you know, connotation of the nine, the vibration of the nine, the aspect of the nine, then you will understand that comment about the 2007. It was very interesting to me uh, to go back and see what happened because of the energy of the nine. And there, there were a couple of different things that were going on. I remember there was huge demonstrations against Putin, actually, in 2007. Um, I, and I don't know if he was already elected or, I mean, I don't really n- understand the uh, time frame of when he became the head of, of Russia. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that time frame, but I do remember there were huge demonstrations. And look at it now, nine years later. So when we get into the nine, you will see that connection that I have made mm-hmm. and that I understand about this number nine. How do you so think... There was a, how, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm just wondering, how would you compare the last nine year, which was 2007, now we know, to this nine year as we're progressing through history as our trajectory is moving at least linearly through history i i my assumption would be sharon that this nine year would be far more intense and uh, you know progressed versus the previous nine year oh yeah is it, it more intense has. is it going to be oh, more yes. intense yes yes this decade has been just uh, an accumulation of events that really are restructuring every part of life every part whether it's elements whether boundaries laws intentions you know evil crops of people but there's also you know let me tell you this as an artist i'm an artist okay Mm -hmm. and and i am a colorist and when i studied color i understood that if if you have black or you have a dark color, and you want something to pop out, you're going to use white, you're going to use yellow, you're going to use beige, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's the contrast and the juxtaposition of the dark and the light. So it is that idea that we need to see and we need to applaud the light in the world. What happened in 2007 is finishing up now. It wasn't just the Putin thing, and uh, there was also the, as I mentioned, the climate and the and the uh, the climate and the Clean Air Act that was trying to to move forward in 2007. But there were some other kind of things that there was some mass shootings that were kind of new, you know, um, and, uh, and that has developed more intensely. So it's almost as if people just get numb. And again, that song, I can't get, I, you know, the song by the, by the Rolling Stones, I can't get no satisfaction. It's that after a while, nothing is satisfying enough. So everything increases in in, uh, in, uh, in higher levels of of 
you know, evilness, of goodness, of, you know, extreme weather, extreme conditions, extreme elements, extreme everything. Everything right. is different. Yeah. We are moving. This has been a building block since the last nine-year cycle, and this one that we're finishing up momentarily, okay, starting January 1st, we are starting a whole new nine-year cycle. And we are redefining, whether you call it the structure of the world, the matrix, whatever you want to call it, it is all being redefined, and it hasn't ended yet. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, again, I keep hearing you say the dark, the darkness is before the dawn. It's the darkest before the dawn, yeah. which is obviously yeah. a very uh, pr sort of a perennial phrase. Uh, yeah. Mom used to say it all the time, and I'm wondering, Sharon, are we not to conjure it certainly, but are we moving into the darkest of hours in terms of this nine year cycle completing and the dawn being post that, the 2017? Yes, I really believe that's true. You do. The okay. darkness is still being completed before the shade and the curtains uh, bring in the light. Mm -hmm. um, that That is exactly what's happening. And you see, this is what pushes us. It's what catapults us, okay? It's when this darkness happens that we all take ownership and more responsibility, and we're thinking outside of the box a little bit more. How could I change things? Maybe I'm going to be nicer to people. You know, things are being redefined. When we look at schools and we see that teachers make so little money and use mostly their money, lots of their money, to educate children and to, and to feed the children that haven't been fed. And, you know, that is, those teachers are our biggest investment, okay? Uh, when we see that, when we see seasons being enmeshed, uh, when we see that um, just that people are not living on the land, not living and knowing where their salami sandwich came from. Uh, when, we <laughs> see, when we see criminalizing homeless people, yeah. I mean, come on. I don't think there's ever been as many homeless people. And some of these homeless people, and many of them, are from the military mm -hmm. that have fought for us, that have held back some of the evil. And they're living in the streets being criminalized also. Mm, yeah. When we see jails and we see prisons with revolving doors and we have to take a look, this is not working. Mm, we mm. need to do some healing with these people that are here. Right. So when the system is changing like this and the connotation of words and, and thoughts about, you know, standard ideas and when this world all the whole global world becomes the Wild West with gunfighters. And, and as I mentioned, you know, uh, and even now the Boy Scouts, I heard that the girls want to sue the Boy Scouts because they want to be in the Boy Scouts. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we do have different genders. Can't the boys do their boy thing and the girls do? Th I mean, yeah. I'm all for the girls, but come on. Yeah. So when the landscape changes, and it's like a snowball right now, this has been a snowball. It has getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and the snowball is moving faster, and the snowball is changing rules, and the snowball is squashing houses and people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to say, is that things, there is going to be a renaissance. Things are getting our attention. All of this, you know, imbalance, which I did talk about for this number eight, remember? Mm -hmm. I talked about the symbol of the eight being on its side and when it's in balance, but it hasn't been in balance in any single way. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we have to depend right now, Alexis. We must trust our intuition and faith for the highest good of all because we are all one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to a lot to think about. We 
we have to make the choice, I think, to first understand that we have intuition to use it uh, to be able to stop this this uh, snowball effect, if you will. Um, you're right. You're right. But it's going to be it's I think it's going to be up to the individual, frankly. And the more individuals, the, the more uh, uh, the more power and, and the more likely that that shift will occur. But you're right. We have to we have to start looking at these things from a different perspective. Um, and know that we have the power to do it ourselves. I want to ask you in terms of, um, again, looking at the unprecedented events, I, I just can't, and as we speak, who knows what's happening, what's what's going to happen. And again, I don't want to conjure anything, but it's been unprecedented, regardless of the real origin, because I don't know, once again, uh, that the official story that we're getting on all of these events occurring is what is actually occurring. But there's there's unrest, right. there's no doubt, regardless yes. of its uh, origin. Um, yes. So we're looking at external level events. We're looking at events playing out on the 3D physical level. I want to ask you, because I've always felt that underneath what's undergirding that from a more esoteric or metaphysical level is what's driving what we're experiencing on a physical level. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. What is really happening here metaphysically? Well, it has to do with us having the free will of choice, you know, that we, we came into this world, we can do whatever we want to do. Yes, there are consequences, and some people don't pay attention to that, of course. But we have choice, and that is one of the biggest words, the biggest understandings, that we could do whatever we want to do, and we will be judged by those choices, whether it's in this world or it's in the other dimension. But the power be it, you know, the God force, the universal spirit, Hashem, the Lord, however you believe, whatever your thoughts are on that, is the underlying power. And so there's a cause and effect for everything. We have the free will. Look where it got us. Mm -hmm. Look where it got us. Mm -hmm. And so at this time, it is important to really specialize in subjectivity and develop our own talents of invention and discovery and and just putting out new principles and and really like I said going inside you know it's when we're on our knees okay we have freedom of choice but we all are bombarded in different ways of having challenges and such and when we're on our knees and there's no place to go because we come in alone and we leave alone, whether we're married, whether we have friends, but when we're on our knees and there's no place to go, the only place to go is inside. Mm -hmm. And when you're inside, when the world is this way where people are forced to be conscious and go inside, that's when they're going to mine their Gems. gems. You love to say that. I've heard you say that so many times. Yes. Mine, they're uh-huh. gems. Yes. Well, I think that's very observant of, of you, Sharon, and, and the audience knows that I think we're we're driving down a road that we've driven down before, and that is really the um, what is the universal essence of all the tumult that we're seeing, and does it have a purpose in driving us within to mine our gems? Yes. So we talk of all these things, these horrible, horrific things that are happening, and we say, wow, this is really bad. But as individuals, sovereign as we have the free will to choose to be, might the horrificness, if that's a word, of uh, the world right now might be a nudge, a heavy nudge to get us to go within. I've said I think for the past yeah. three or four shows, I've been bringing it up, and I, I think it stands to be re- repeated. So I, yeah. I think that's where you were going there. I like the way you put that, a nudge. Yeah. A kick. Yeah. I would say more like, more like a kick in the butt because it's pretty heavy. How about a, it's not a whisper anymore. It's a it's, scream. It is. It is. It's just, we are all in the Wild West packing guns, mm-hmm. and they want to take guns away from people, but it's not the good people with the guns. The bad people already have the guns. <laughs> So, 
you know, yeah. it's the, the whole thing is quite interesting. So it's the black and the white. Mm-hmm. It's the contrast, the juxtaposition that will help us. Everything is designed by the great architect above. It's, you know, God, however, whoever you believe in, the great one, the powerful one. This is designed. He is the architect. He has caused this dissonance. From the very beginning of time with Adam and Eve, it has been dissonance. There is no clarity. There has been no clarity between truth and good and evil. There, it has been confusion. And the confusion's been the snowball. And it's undefined all what was defined. And, you know, again, I agree with you about, you know, the shepherds. There are the good shepherds and the bad shepherds. But I guess I'm talking about the whole system of life in which we, we've we been living, we've known through generations. You know, we're a little more uh, understanding about behavior now than we were, you know, in the 30s and 40s and 50s. It's all been accumulative. It's all been developing. And now we can say we're a wise we're a wise people, but we're a people of conflict. We're a people of confusion. And it just makes a little more confusion when you don't, you can't, uh, you know, you can't uh, um, just believe that uh, some is coming and you can go on vacation. Because, you know, again, in December in Central Park, they're having picnics and wearing shorts. Nothing is definable anymore or reliable. Mm-hmm. And, and so things are thrown up in the air and we're trying to see where they're going to land because we really don't know. We don't know. The law. Mm-hmm. No, we don't know. Yeah. This is a time of not knowing. Yeah. We're, we're not knowing. And we have to go within ourselves because where else can we go? Right. Well, I don't know. Now we get into the whole idea of uh, what we call fate and future and are they as we have been taught. I tend to be, Sharon, one that looks at reality as very malleable, very flexible, and thus very uh, having the willingness and the ability to be created um, by us individuals. So uh, perhaps that sort of not knowing, uh, again, is another sort of unsettling, but still an opportunity to, to, uh, to shape the future for ourselves as we see it. So yes, again, it's a bit of a paradox, the things that we're talking about. I really do think yeah. it takes for each and every one of us, we have to make it a priority to sit down and contemplate. That's a word I love to use. Contemplate the possibilities and con- contemplate um, what this is all about. Because I, I personally think we're on a precipice for a, a huge shift. And yet what's on the other side of that is not decided yet. I think it's going to be up to us. Uh, exactly. Well, you know, we're we're winding down. We've got about eight minutes left, maybe a little bit less. So I wanted I want to talk about this for a little bit. And I, you know, you're you're wonderful at inspiring and and making us all think a little bit deeper and uh, going within. But I want to ask you, Sharon, what advice would you give to those who are looking to truly harness the best of what this nine year has to offer? I think just what I'm saying, talking about. And, and just exposing more of the goodness mm. so that it will pop out of the darkness. And, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, we're like in a global civil war right now. It's like the Tower of Babel. Everybody is speaking different languages. So going outside of ourselves is too confusing. And the only place is to go inside and mine the gems. So what is it that people come, they're born into? Why did your soul chose to come in? It chose to come in to see why you're here. We, you were picked. You, Alexis, me, Sharon. We were the chosen ones. You know, graphically speaking, out of all that made us, you know, and, and all that helped us be conceived, we could have been many other people. So we have a job to do. And we do have challenges, but we do have gifts. And it's when things are chaotic, when there is a Tower of Babel, when you can't really trust outside of yourself, the only place to go is inside. And, you know, we're going into a number nine year that we haven't discussed yet, the energy of the nine. I, I think that this might be a good time, if you think. Absolutely, to, to go for it. it. Yes, Please do. So I want to just say that we're still in this nine-year cycle, 
and we're finishing up the eight, and on January 1st, we'll start the nine year. And nine is a very powerful number. Even the mathematical and scientific worlds have acknowledged number nine as being very mysterious. You know, uh, if you take a number nine and you multiply it by any number that you choose, and we can do it very simply right now, Mm -hmm. nine times two is 18, the compound number always brings us back to a nine. That's right. And it doesn't matter how big the number is that you multiply by nine, because if you keep adding it up, you'll always have nine. Nine is an all-encompassing number. All the numbers are in number nine. So we're going to be finishing up a cycle with tremendous force and tremendous energy. It is a number of destruction and war, but it's also a number of great humanitarian and service to others. Mm -hmm. And there goes the juxtaposition again. It is a time of completion. It's a time of rest. It's endings. It has to do, Alexis, and even though it's, you know, holiday time, uh, so it's kind of, you know, uh, apropos, putting all the bows on the packages and sending them off. It's these endings that we're going into right now which are going to bring the new beginnings for 2017 in the number one year. So this is a time, it's an emotional time because it's an ending time. It's a time where people and maybe even countries may break up. They may cut ties, which would be hard because what we're seeing right now is that because of this dissonance, and there we go again with the juxtaposition, the countries have gotten together with the climate changes and and the global warming and also fighting the evil. The countries are now finally getting together, and hopefully more will get together even with science and medical and share some information so that the world is going to become a better place. Uh, but So there's going to be endings, but there, but there are also beginnings as things are ending. Uh, out with the old, in with the new, breakthroughs in science. You know, right now they just discovered an antibiotic that is not resistant uh, to resistance antibiotics. It's a soup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a fabulous thing right now. You know, this is going to be a time of cleaning house, both emotionally and physically. It's a time, Alexis, to end all things that are not good with you, any of us, mm-hmm. or we will be in the same place nine years later. And that's what I meant about 2007. You see? Mm-hmm. What was started then or what was sort of spotlighted then, is now accumulating a little bit more energy to be finished. Wow. Okay? Yeah. It's a time of letting go and releasing, decluttering, getting ready for 2017. The slate has to be clean. So here's the time of ending everything and completing everything that isn't good for us, so that we can have the rebirth and new beginnings and instituting new plans and creating new ideas when 2017 rolls through and it's going to be a whole new number one year. Mm -hmm. But right now, number nine is the energy of Mars, and that is a physical force in every form. I told you, Alexis, that number seven was water. Uh, You know, 2014 was water. 2015, the year we're in right now, is Earth, the Earth moving, and 2016 is fire. So we may see the worst year of wildfires in U.S. history. It is fire and combustion. That's what we're going to be seeing. It's a whole new landscape. There's going to be way more security everywhere. And I also think that it's very possible that there could be an economic collapse where money, where U.S. dollars are not really going to be very valuable. It's going to be silver and gold. And that's where I leave it. You really left the juice for last, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> you left the juice. So people, you're, well, at, if you're at this point, then you've heard the whole interview, but I'm going to put in the show notes, do not turn that dial because you just packed a wallop in the last several minutes 
Yes, um, I did. I'm not going to harp on you. You said some pretty uh, sobering things, and I'm yes. not going to reiterate them because we don't want to conjure them. But I yes. want uh, uh, all of us to uh, take take mental note and a particularly spiritual note, because I think we're going to need to ramp up uh, our, our spiritual uh, mojo, if you will. Yes. Uh, there's, there's a lot happening, but there's a lot of good happening. And, you know, I'm going to make oh, one, yes. one little point I want to make before we end, uh, Sharon. You yes. used the word rebirth and the, yes. the cycle. And as you were describing uh, a time for completion in this nine year, uh, yes. and if we choose not to uh, complete and get rid of the things that we don't need, we will return to repeat the entire process again. And it immediately reminded me of the reincarnational cycle. And then you said rebirth. And yes. and yes. really, all these things are, are, are connected, I think. We 100%. are reincarnating. We are getting ready to reincarnate into a new cycle. So, well, A new renaissance, a new world, a new structure, a new matrix, a new everything. New opportunity. And we mm-hmm. have it. Well, listen, my dear, as always, uh, what can I say? Your wisdom, <laughs> the passion that comes through your voice as you're, you're speaking uh, your gospel is always welcome here. Your third annual visit to what is now called Higher Journeys Radio. I believe the last time we spoke, it was Conscious Inquiry. We are now Higher Journeys Radio. I want everybody to go to higherjourneys.com forward slash HJ Radio to hear this show on demand again and again. And I think it's worth listening to uh, quite a few times. But in the meantime, Happy New Year, everyone. I should say Happy Holidays and Happy New Year. Sharon, to you, continued blessings as always. Thanks so much for and joining Al- us. Alexis, I want to thank you for having me, and I just want to give you my email address for the people out there. We're going to have it linked up, but you can go ahead and give it to us. Okay. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> Alexis. It's uh, info at Sharon Milstein, M-I-L-L-S-T-E-I-N, SharonMilstein.com. And your website would be of the same ilk. That is Sharon yes, Milstein. Sharon Milstein.com. Sharon Milstein.com. Yes, we will, of course, have that linked up. Well, until next time, my dear friend, happy holidays, and happy life. God bless you. God bless. Thank you so much for the opportunity. A new renaissance, a new world, a new structure, a new matrix, a new everything. This, in a nutshell, is what Sharon encourages us all to gear up for as we approach this nine year of 2016. It's time to ready ourselves for new beginnings, but the choice is ours as to how we decide to do this. Free will and taking responsibility and how we use that will is a must as we approach the end of a powerful nine year cycle and get ready to begin anew. As we wrap up 2015 with this year-end show, allow me to say how much I appreciate you, your interest in the subjects we cover at Higher Journeys, and most importantly, your desire to take on the highest and most adventurous journey for yourself. Happy holidays, and may your 2016 be blessed beyond your wildest dreams. Until next year, I'm your host, Alexis Brooks. Alexis Brooks.